Thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. This is known as the hardest crowd to speak in front of in all of New York. So let me say something. Shh. Not bad. Well, I just come back from Washington, where guess what? We prevented a government shutdown. The government will stay open. The Senate this afternoon and the House this evening voted to keep the government open. And we know what damage it would have done to shut it down. So I'm glad to be here on this happy occasion. I want to thank my dear friend of 30 years. Shh. Good. I want to thank my good friend of 30 years, Jed Walentis, and congratulate him. He's going to be a great new chair of Rebney. Let's hear it for Jed. Where did he go? There he is. Maybe when he retires, he'll put on a tie, but not yet. And of course, Doug Durst, who did a great job, and another good friend. Let's hear it for Doug, who does have a tie on, and it doesn't match his glasses tonight. Sometimes his tie matches his glasses. And I want to thank all of you. I've been a good friend of this organization for many years. I was very honored a few years back to receive the John Zuccotti Public Service Award and will continue to work for New York. I believe in New York. I love New York. And I thank all of you, because last year I was reelected, and I'm the first senator to ever have five terms in the United States Senate. Thank you for that. Now, we've done a lot for New York. Everything I do, Thank you. Everything I do in Washington as the first majority leader ever from New York is to help the city and the state I so love. And in fact, as you may remember, my mentor, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, used to decry the fact that New York always sent more money to Washington than we got back. In the last two years, for the first time ever, New York got more money back than we sent down to D.C. It's good to have the majority leader from New York. We got over $200 billion during COVID to keep New York going, our hospitals, our transit, our small businesses, our uh, religious and nonprofit institutions, our museums. It did good. And I'm continuing to fight for New York. We're going to have a good tax bill, bipartisan, you know, we had the most successful Senate last year than we have ever had in 30 years. And we did it. Six of the big seven bills we passed, the infrastructure bill, the chips bill, the bill on guns, the IRA, all of these things were done in a bipartisan way. And, da and um, Daniel, uh, Robert Cairo inscribed his book to me, Master of the Senate, to the Jewish LBJ. So I was proud of that. Well, we're continuing to do it, and good news, the low-income tax credit, which has done so much for housing in New York, shh, at a time when it's difficult to get dollars, we still can get tax breaks. I got the, I set a, I worked hard to set a 4% floor for this credit a few years back, and it's built over 125,000 affordable units in New York. So this year, working with Rebney and the Real Estate Board, I insisted that the low-income tax credit be improved. And in the new bipartisan tax bill that's coming up, we will both boost the state credit allocation by 12.5% and critically reduce the bond financing requirements down from 50 to 30%. That's going to build a lot of units in New York. We're also doing great on infrastructure. Shh. I'm trying to beat my, one of my former mentors, Tip O'Neill. He had the big dig. It was the biggest public work project in America at the time. But we have Gateway. It's full steam ahead and is now going to surpass the big dig and be the biggest public works project in America ever. 
employing thousands and thousands of workers and pumping a lot of money into New York. We're also doing so much more on infrastructure, the Second Avenue subway, Long Island River tunnels, east side access to Grand Central, Amtrak's northern corridor. It's all going to be great. So folks, shh, I believe in you. The more cranes I see, the happier I am. It's a symbol of our success. It's a symbol of jobs, good paying jobs. It's a symbol of New York's prosperity. And in conclusion, don't believe all of those who say New York's greatest days are behind us. People want to live here. We are the greatest, most diverse city in the world. Between 2010 and 2020, listen to this. The New York Times didn't even write about it, which got me upset. But between 2010 and 2020, the population of New York City alone shh, went from 8.1 million to 8.9 million, 800,000 gain in people. We gained more than 800,000 people, absolutely. That's more than any other city, but we're the biggest city. But astoundingly, we gain, on a per capita basis of the 25 largest metropolitan areas, we were fourth. We gained more people per capita than Miami, than Boston, than San Francisco, than so many other cities. But you know what it means? We got to find good housing for all those people, and we must do everything we can at the federal, state, and local levels to encourage and incentivize good new housing. And I will be fighting for that. So, Rebney, thanks for the great job you do. As long as I am majority leader, Rebney will have a great friend fighting for New York, fighting for New York real estate in Washington. Thank you and have a great evening, everybody. Great to be with all of you.